Welcome back to another episode of the Miami Heat Roundtable. I'm your host, Amir. You can find me at the Team to Beat Miami Heat podcast. We got Martel. You can find him at the Miami Heat Zone podcast. We got Ernest. You can find him at Miami Heat Talk. And we got Trent. Please don't crash your bike right now. <laughs> Riding on the streets. You can find him at Miami Heat Network. You can also find him on the streets right now, literally. Where's the cranberry juice, Trent? Where's the cranberry juice, bro? Yeah, where's that? He's, he's making the tiki talk right now. So... <laughs> Boys, it's been a while. We haven't had an episode where it's just the four of us, right? So I mean, we've had guests, but we all haven't been available lately. So the crew is back together. Happy to see all your faces. Yeah, so buddy. a lot has not been happening, obviously, with the offseason, um, especially after we all know we just re-signed Haywood Highsmith, which I think is a good thing, on a cheap contract. And now it looks like we don't have any room for another roster spot, even though we have a roster spot available, we're, we're two million away from the second apron. So it looks like we're going to be going into the regular season and training camp with the roster that we have right now. So our three favorite words that we keep saying year after year, run it back. Terry Rozier, he's back. That's a good thing. That's some good news. We'll talk about that. Um, he's cleared from his neck injury. We don't know how that happened, but Terry mentioned it. Hey, he said he's excited to run it back with this team to see what they can do to shock the world once again. Let's start off with Martel. What do you think about Terry's statement? First off, how happy are you that he's back? Because that's a positive. Let's focus on the positive. He's healthy. But what are your thoughts on the sentiment of Terry thinking it's good that he's back and we're going to run it back? It's really not good that we're running it back. Because also, to think about it like this. I mean, does Terry solve some of the scoring issues? Yes and no. Because even when Terry you know, was on this roster, we still really couldn't score the basketball. My whole thing about running it back is how many times are we going to run back the same core over and over and over again? You know, Stephen A. Smith, he even said it on the OG podcast with you, Donna Sazam, you know, oh, well, why are the Miami Heat, why are they looking for a star when they have Tyler Hero? Because Tyler Hero is really not that type of guy where he's going to give you 25 points a night. You know, none of the all-star type guys that we have like on our roster in terms of Jimmy Bam and Tyler, they can't give you like a random 30-point game every now and then. They don't do that. You know, so I just think that running it back right now, especially with I think we have like one of the worst rosters out of the few that we've had. So how on earth are we going to keep running this core back after we already been in the playing tournament twice? You know, we can sit here, wish, hope, pray, you know, and say, well, well, heat culture and don't worry that the other teams will get hurt. But that's not guaranteed. You know, people are saying that Jimmy Butler is going to play 70 games because he's in his contract here. Why would he all of a sudden play 70 games? Why? Because guess what? At the end of the day, even if he leaves, he's going to get his money regardless. If all these guys like Paul George and all these other guys get their bag, why Why wouldn't Jimmy get it? And Jimmy played more games than Paul George. So I just think that I don't know what this Miami Heat roster is doing. I think they're going young in front of us, but they're not going to just come out and say that. Ernest, what are your thoughts on running it back? One more time. No. And depending on health, because that's like the biggest if, Trent's favorite word, if, if, if. And realistically, if they're healthy, then we have a higher ceiling than the play-in. But that's a big if with Jimmy, with Tyler, with other players on this roster. So what are your thoughts on the sentiment of running it back? I mean, I think this is the only year where we're running it back where it's like, okay, I think we're going to get to the light at the end of the tunnel because – um, I, I, I agree with what Martel said. Like, why do we expect Jimmy to all of a sudden play over 70 games? I mean, contract year, Martel, I'm sure you know this with any sport. In a contract year, you know, a player does step up a little bit more. But you're right. Jimmy's going to get his money regardless. However, dude turns 36 next year. I don't think it'll be as easy as Paul George. Paul George was 34. It's, it, it is a big difference. So I think Jimmy's going to have to give it a little bit. Um, does that really solve the issue? Because what's the problem that we've all had with Jimmy Butler? It's not about how many games he plays. I mean, that is one issue, but it's about how much he actually tries in these games because sure, Jimmy could play 70 games next year, but if 35 of those games are where he scores 11 points, five rebounds, four assists, standing in the corner, doing nothing, does that really help you to what a Jaime Hawkes can do during the regular season who actually cares more? Um, so the main problem, we've said this so long, and I, and I, I don't want to bring up old times, but I'll say this. In 2022, Jimmy Butler missed the same amount of time, and we were able to carry a first seed. It was because the players around were healthy. 
Tyler played a lot of games. Kyle played a lot of games. Caleb Martin stepped up. Gabe Vincent stepped up. Max Drew stepped up. There was a lot of guys that played a lot of games. PJ Tucker played a lot of games. Bam and Abayo. So I don't really think it's necessarily Jimmy. I think if next season, if we, you know, run it back, if Tyler can play more than 70 games, if Terry can play more than 70 games, Bam, Jaime, Jovic, you know, where, then I think that we may have a chance to stay at least at the top six of the East. I'm not saying we're a top three, top two team. All I'm saying is get this team to the playoffs, see what the hell they can do in seven games. If they, if they don't do anything, let Jimmy walk. Now it's time to build around Bam. At least this is the final year where we can get an answer. Are we going to keep this building forward or blowing it up? It's not going to be like 2023 where we don't have an answer. I think this is going to be the year that towards the end of the season, we're finally going to have our answer. Keep it going. Blow it up. My only problem with that, Trent, before you hop in, is we already know what this core can do. And it's not win games together because, Trent, you gave us the stat all throughout the season. When Jimmy, Bam, and Tyler played, what was their record, right? We don't know that number anymore on top of my head, but they were below 500. That was the issue. Well, that's when he started. That's when he started. Remember, Trent gave another number when Tyler came off the bench. So that was a different number. That's fair, but they still haven't won a championship, which is the ultimate goal. Like This build is in year six now, I think, and it hasn't worked. So we already kind of know the answer. Even with health, Like I still don't – with like as this team is, the only way I can see them going far is if PG or Embiid gets hurt. So they're out of the equation. If KP gets hurt and someone else on Boston gets hurt, and if someone on the Knicks gets hurt, like I think that's like our only path, and we have to be healthy. So like everything has to go right. It's not impossible, right? Anything's possible, according to Kevin Garnett, right? So, but I, I agree with you, Ernest. I think if we are healthy, like we could be five or six seed for sure, right? Like we could even be. I don't. I think getting into the top four is gonna be difficult if healthy. To your point, if Tyler plays seventy, if Jimmy plays. 65 70 games i think you're right i think that's the range get us in the tournament anything can happen it's possible but i think it's unlikely with this current roster trent trade jimmy eric spolster sucks what do you got Keep, let's hear your thoughts yo listen man miami he's the life man we ain't trading jimmy spoke the best coach in the world man what you talking about man all right that's what we ride that's what we repping right now um but now in seriousness though Enough of all this, like, trade talk. There's nothing we can do now. We got to ride out with this roster, so it is what it is. I'm happy to see Terry and Tyler go at it and um, see what happens. That's, that's really all we can control. That's, that's, that's really all we can control at this point, man. I mean, I, it, it's like I said, I'm, I'm, let's say if this team has another good run during the season, they stay healthy. Okay, you can make a decision. Are we going to extend Jimmy or are we not? You want to say that Jimmy's going to retire here, but at what cost? You don't want to put yourself in the Kyle Lowry hole again. Um, but if this team, let's say they are a play-in team again. Let's say they don't make the playoffs. That's actually best-case scenario for the Heat because if the Heat don't make the playoffs with this team, then they're going to get their draft pick. It's lottery hey, protected Ernie. in 2025. Hey, Ernie, so tell me. One second. I have a question real quick. So at trade deadline, and if this team is – not in the playoffs at trade before the trade deadline heading into the trade deadline. Do we trade Jimmy then? Yeah. Because if you're not yeah. a playoff team, yeah. If you're not, here's the thing. Um, Define we don't have our draft. Quick, Ernest, sorry to cut yeah. you off. Define playoffs. Do you mean like a top six seed or seven and eight? Cause that's considered now playing well, or nine like, and I'm, 10. If we're nine I'm, and 10, I'm, there you go. Go from there. I'm, sorry. Ernest. I'm, Just want to clarify. Oh, I'll be honest. If we're not a top six seed, I think we should trade Jimmy either. Like if we're Facts. if if we're a playing team again, what's the point? Yeah. No, I mean, look, I 100% agree there. I love Jimmy. I love Jimmy on this team. But a, we didn't draft him, and b, it's business. You cannot put yourself in a Kyle Lowry hole. I was the guy that was running the positive train all year. Y'all remember in the season? I'm sure the fans remember all the the conversations we were having mid season. I was the guy that was saying. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Look what happened in the playoffs in 2023. Doesn't matter what happens in the season. Get them to the dance. See what can happen. The problem was the team ran with that same mentality all season long, and it blew up in their faces. This is the final year. So if the Miami Heat, if Jimmy's not stepping up during the season, if they're the ninth or the 10th seed, why the hell? I mean, look, yeah, positive Heat fan. 
your he culture. Remember the 2017 season when we went 11 and 30 and then we went 30 and 11 the second half of the season. What good did that do us? You know, it got us banned. That's cool. But we could have gotten Tate. Like, you know, we could have gotten a way better draft pick. Mm -hmm. If the Miami Heat are the ninth seed or the 10th seed by uh, the trade deadline and you have an opportunity to make a trade, fine. Make a trade. Because for all you know, you make that trade and maybe you get better. Maybe these young guys step up. Or you don't make the playoffs. You get your draft pick back. And in 2025, there's a loaded draft class coming in. If the Heat are a part of that, imagine what they can do if they get in the lottery. You can get a pick and now you can actually build. It's like I've said before, you guys, the last 25 years, we've had incredible gold seasons. There's no problem having a couple silver years if you're trying to go back to gold. Like, get your finances in order. We've tried this build for a few years. It's worked a lot of times, but we haven't gotten a ring. To Trent and Martell's point, they said it every year. It's championship or bust. If you don't win a championship, maybe it's time to do different things. Maybe this Tyler getting injured every year thing is something to tell you. Maybe this is not the guy. Maybe Jimmy, maybe this is not the build. We love the Miami, the, the Alonzo Mourning and Tim Hardaway build. A team never won a championship. And Pat Riley knew when it was time to pull the trigger. He traded Mashburn. He traded PJ Brown. He got Eddie Jones. He got Anthony Mason. Sometimes in business, you got to make a difficult decision, but sometimes it works for you. So yeah, I'd do it. There's one thing, Martel, before you jump in. I was watching Five Reasons, and Ethan and Alex were talking, and they actually said, Ernest, it's better if we make the playoffs this year so we don't get the draft pick because it's lottery picked or protected. They're saying that it's better that if we're bad next year, if Jimmy doesn't resign with us, um, it's better to have our pick the following season, actually. I don't you know. You mean 2026? Yes, exactly. Not the twenty. Well, because I don't, it's, said that on because the, it's on unprotected. Yeah, because it would be our pick. I mean, sure, that's fine. Yeah. But what I think what they were meaning by that is that for next season, you're already going to have all these players. So, and and Ethan, he's connected to the teams. He knows the Heat isn't going to make a trade. He knows they're not going to make a trade. He knows they're, they're going to play. Yeah. They're going to make the playoffs. Whether whatever seed there are, they're going to make the playoffs, and they're going to see where they go from there. That's what we know that this Heat team does. What I'm hoping for next year is that everybody can look in the mirror, say, hey, our way didn't work last year. Let's listen to Spo and let's do it right during the season. I just want to see. I've never seen a fully committed team during the season. I only saw it one year, 2020. And in that year, when everybody was committed, Jimmy, Bam, Goran Dragic, Tyler Hero, all these guys, we were one of the top teams in the East. Every year after that, Injury, injury, injury. 2022, we were the first seed, and Jimmy only played 58 games. That's because the collective team around him was actually playing. So if this team can do it again this year, bro, I know we say that they're not a top five team, but bro, this team could shock the hell out of people. Like, they really can if they just get it the hell together, bro. Yeah, but it's like, you know, some of the best organizations, they always get off of a player before they really go off the cliff. I don't you know, I'm not saying that we have to just hurry up and trade Jimmy Butler, but we also got to think about the future. You know, we also have to recoup some of the assets that we've mismanaged. So there's a lot of things going on right now with this Miami Heat roster. It's just a shame. You know what I mean? Like, I know a lot of people are going to say, yeah, don't worry. Jimmy's going to come back, you know, motivated and whatnot. Listen, I hope. I'm not saying that he has to play 82, but as long as that effort is there, as long as, you know, because even Kevin Love, Kevin Love. Um, you know, he said that we need to take the regular season seriously. Same thing with Hayward Heisman. He said that it starts during training camp. We need to take the regular season seriously. We can't like afford to start off the season eight and eight, and then now we're in a hole compared to all yep. the other teams. Bro, the East is loaded. I know that it's a paper thing, but the East is loaded in terms of overall talent. Go ahead, Trent. So, um, what I will say too, right? When you look at the the landscape of the NBA, real quick, right? Um. And we, we talked about this before, man, a long, a long time ago about a video, right? But the team's updated and teams have a lot more stars now. I mean, when you just look at the East real quick, Philly has a big three that they're all stars in my opinion. Tyrese Max is an all-star. Paul George is yep. an all-star. Joel is the second best big, right? Then, I mean, you can look at New York. Jalen Brunson's a star player. And then they got a bunch of mediocre, just not, I don't say mediocre, but no, good high level role players. Yeah, high level, level role players. B plus, B plus yeah, players. Right? So then. You got the Knicks, and then, like, you got these young teams that I continue to keep saying, Ernest, we, you wasn't on the episode last time, but I've been talking about this Pacers team and this Magic team and stuff like that yep. that are in our way. They're in our way. I don't care yep. what anybody says. They're, they made it to the playoffs. 
they they went to a dog battle with Donovan Mitchell, and then they the Pacers made it to Eastern Conference Finals. So you can't say all oh, they're just gonna fall off. No, they're gonna get better. They have good coaches over there, you know, and they improved. So the only mm-hmm. team that I say that we're better than right now at this moment, right? But and this is is the Cavaliers. At this moment, we're mm-hmm. only better than the Cavaliers. That's just my opinion. I, y'all have other opinions, but at playoff the top, yeah. Seven, or, you mean in the playoffs, not regular season, right? No, right now. I'm talking about today, right now. Yeah. Right now, I think every team's better than us besides the Cavaliers. And that's because they just improve their roster. Now, when the regular season hits, okay, maybe it could be a little bit different. Stuff happens, da da da. da. Maybe Tyler Atsy is a 25 point score, whatever the case may be. I don't know. Yeah. Right? Dovich takes that leap. Jaime takes the leap and stuff. Like that. Mm-hmm. But right now, there's only one team that we're better than, and that's the Cavaliers. And it's simple as that. Every team in front of us made a move. Every single team made a move, and our move yep. is Alec Burke. That's it. Well, that's- to your point, here's what I'll say. Um, if you're talking to a Miami Heat representative and you tell them that the Heat didn't make the move, their response to you would be, we did. Terry Rozier was the move. Last year. Now, yep. exactly. But remember, and I swear to God, I hate saying this because I know this is the Miami Heat stigma. The moment he got on the team, game three, Tyler got hurt. So you've never seen Terry with this team acclimated. He's going to have a full training camp. I pray to God that he's that, that they stay they, they stay healthy. Technically, next season, you're going to see the Miami Heat team with a move made with the Rozier trade. Now, I said this in my video recently. Miami Heat fans, the way they look at this team is always with a hindsight 2020 mindset. Because last year, I'm I'm sure you guys remember, everybody was calling the trade Kyle Lowry. But had we not traded Kyle Lowry, that actually would have been way better. Because you would have had all that money available to maybe re-sign Caleb Martin and maybe get somebody else. Maybe sign DeMar DeRozan, but you didn't. You traded for Terry Rozier, who had two years left in his contract. So that put you in a hole for the next two years. So that was the move. Technically, it was last year, but this year, that's what the Miami Heat are going to say. We have our move. It was Terry. We have a big four. Now we just got to see how they go together. I, I yeah. and Oh, go ahead, Trent. I, I, no, I agree with you. I, I think that's why I think Miami didn't is not desperate. But what I say is Tyler and Terry is a terrible defense right there. Just that's a yep. terrible defense right there, right? That's like Trey Young terrible. and DeJounte Murray. Yeah, it's it's it, it, that's awful right there alone, right? And then also, I mean, you don't even gotta know who's Tyler needs the ball in his hand, and Terry is trying to play a different position, but that kind of takes his value away from what we traded him for, right? We traded yeah. him to be that foreign guard. And I understand people have to make sacrifices to win championships, but we traded for him. <laughs> Don't forget, we traded a first-round pick. Yeah. First-round pick for Terry. So we need Terry to be that 20-plus point score. And also, you, your project with Tyler Hero is it's dwindling down. It's it's really just simple as that. You can, yeah. We can't do nothing about that. Like, you got to get off his talk. You got to get off that. And you know what's going to happen to everybody in this group, right? Not everybody, but just to talking to y'all. You see what the Bulls are doing to Zach Levine? They're offering a first-round pick to get off him. That's going to happen to Tyler. We're going to have to offer yep. a first-round pick or even second-round picks or two second-round picks to get off Tyler no. next season. No. I, I, I call not, this right not, now. But it's not apples no, to apples because right Levine's now. making $50 million. Tyler's not going to make that much. He's making Dude. way more, so it's a little different. Yeah, like they're talking about like two – like, bro, like one first-round pick, two second-round picks just Y'all to get see. off him. Yo, listen. Listen. But Y'all Trent listen. does have a point, though, because nobody wants to take his salary right what now. If, because yeah. Bro, Y'all listen, the Miami yep. Heat are trying to trade people right now, but nobody wants Duncan's salary and nobody wants Tyler's salary. And I don't uh, blame them. I don't know about They're Duncan. Duncan's teams. expiring. Duncan's well, is expiring. I thought soon, he had like right? two more years, no? Two more years. No, he has one more year and then a player option. This well, is his final year. His back, Go ahead, though. His back, though. His back, though, right? The, his back. And I get the Yeah, what is up dip. with that, though? Yeah, th- back, no one has said anything about that. I've been hearing that. It's like messed up. It, that's concerning to anybody in the league because, bro, a shooter. Shooter. bro, you seen what happened when he was playing in that playoffs? He couldn't do no, it was bad. Nothing. He came back too bad. early. That's bad. But if it's but like, here's the he thing: back is back he injury? healed? I haven't that's heard anything. Thing. Like, is he? What's going on? What is? Is there any update? I haven't heard no. anything about it. That's it's a backer injury, but back heals. That's but it might not though. Sorry, Trent. Look at this. Think about this. T yeah. Max career got derailed because of his back spasms and his back injury. Like you can get healed from it, but it depends on how severe the back injury that is. Sucks, right? So, man. so we don't know. Yo, we don't know. Ernest, it, you brought up Kayla Martin. Yeah. Up, you brought up Kayla Martin, right? And I, this is how I feel. If you if you leave my team, you're the ops. 
And real quick, I understand he had to say what he had to say, but F. Kayla Martin talking about he's joining a winning culture with the Philadelphia 76ers. <laughs> bro, he has to what say has that. Bro. He he's got to say that. He's he got to say that. Well, he what don't. He you know say? what he oh, really man. wants to culture? say? You know what Caleb really wants to say? Caleb wants to go on the podium and say this. My agent is a moron. I'm going to fire him after this season. And Better. if it wasn't for my agent, I would still be a Miami Heat player right now. Thank you, Caleb Martin's agent, for digging us out of that hole. Because you know what, you guys? Ain't nobody was offering Caleb Martin $14 million a year. And that's what the Heat did. It was going to be a five-year, $65 million contract. He had to opt in into the uh, in the, the first year Finally, with the player yep. option. Yep. Then every year, it would have been $14 million per year because it would have been a four-year, $58 million extension. I ain't trying to do that. We don't know what this Jimmy Butler is going to do, uh, what this build's going to be. I say try to free up as much money as you can. Let's see what happens with this team because if you did that with Caleb, you would have been stuck for another four years. That's like another Dion Waiters kind of. <laughs> I mean, he's good, but not that good, right? Like for fourteen but, million for up. five years, that would have been bad. Yes, he has to say that, but no, you really don't. No, he like, doesn't. You, you don't really. He, he does not have to say that, right? You could come up there and be honest. You're not going to get fined for being honest. I'm not saying to say what Ernest said. That's a little bit different. But if you just say, "Listen, <laughs> I, like, yo, money talks. Like, what's wrong with that?" Yeah, money talks. Or even I'm right? just if he would have said that, he would have stayed with the Heat. I'm excited to play with PG and Embiid. He doesn't need to. They haven't won in 41 years, by the way. Well, That's the last time the Sixers won a championship. Why? 41 years, dude. I don't care what anybody says. You don't just, bro. 76ers don't have a culture. Only people that talk about culture is Miami. I don't care what y'all yep. say. That's yep. shots at Miami. That's really just simple yep. as that. That's. You know what, man? Caleb, Caleb was probably butthurt, y'all. Remember, he's he lost his starting job to Jovic. We don't know. There must have been, but he didn't want to. Yeah, but he didn't want to play the four, though. He didn't want to play the four. I mean, if he's saying, I'm just trying to go by what Trent is saying. If he's making and comments look, that kind of snide for the Heat, no, no, no. Look, Five Reasons said it too. They sat Caleb Martin down and said, "Yo, listen, this is what we're telling your agent. Yep, this is what we're telling your agent. It's not gonna work." And guess yep. what? When they opted out of the deal. They told them before you guys opt out, you guys can't come back for the same number. They came back and said, hey, After can we get season, the same yeah, number? Because they late. couldn't do it. It's yeah, now it's, because, it's too late. Yeah, because the only way it would have worked, he had to opt in the $7 million yeah. player yeah. option, and, and then that would have kept player. them then, under the second apron. Yeah, the yeah, Heat could have given – the Heat had his bird rights. They could have given him a five-year, $65 million contract. It's just that they would have been a second apron team. And I'm sorry, for Caleb Martin, I'm not going into the second apron. That's the dumbest thing. You can do an overpay. Exactly. He's coming, down, he's coming off of a down year. How are you going to give him a raise after he came off of a down year? He should have opted in. He should have. But, Bro, that would have been a dumb contract from the Heat. I'm so glad that didn't happen. I agree. But what's your starting lineup for everybody? The Heat? Yeah, like, oh, I got you. Lineup. I got you. If it's me, if I'm starting this team, no way I'm starting Terry and Duncan next. Uh, excuse me, uh, Tyler and Duncan next to Terry. I'm, people are going to call me crazy, but we need defense out there, especially if you want to start Jovic. I would go Bam or uh, Ware or Jovic, most likely Jovic because you need Ware to start. So Bam, Jovic, Jimmy, Highsmith, and Rozier. Highsmith averages 40% from the three-point line, six foot five with a 7'1 wingspan. He's going to make up the defensive tendencies that Terry doesn't bring. You have Highsmith out there as the starting two. Standing in the quarter, shooting threes, guarding the best player so Jimmy doesn't have to. Seven foot one wingspan. He can guard multiple positions. Jovic and Rozier, not known for their defense. Now you have Bam, Jimmy, and Rozier. And look at this bench coming off. And uh, look at this lineup coming off the bench. Tyler Hero is the six man. Duncan Robinson as the sniper. Jaime Hawkes is a Swiss Army knife. Kel L. Ware as the monster coming off the bench. And you still got guys like Alec Burke, Josh Richardson, Kevin Love to fill out the roster. You start Highsmith at the two. That's the answer. Tyler and Duncan need to come off the bench. That, to me, is the best lineup to go with in the season. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to argue like what we want versus what they're going to do because we all agree that Tyler – Trent wants Tyler off the team. So that's his best <laughs> lineup, right, option right there. But we all agree that Tyler should be the sixth man. But that's not going to happen. He doesn't right, want to off. <laughs> exactly. He's, he's like, why are you talking about Tyler? So we all know that Tyler wants to be a starter, thinks he's a starter. Pat Riley in his presser doubled down and said Tyler is a starting guard, right? So Good even Pat Lord. said that. So I, I agree with what you're saying, I think. 
earnest, like optimal wise. I think that that could work. And I would maybe entertain Duncan over Highsmith perhaps, or even put Duncan in and put Jovic on the bench and put Highsmith yeah. at the floor. Tinker around that. But I don't think it's going to happen. I think realistically, Tyler's going to start. I think Ugh. it's going to be, they might start the season off testing Tyler and Terry. I, I hope they yeah. don't. You're right. You're probably two, two guys to making 20 million. Bench, right? Maybe they convince Terry to come off the bench and it's like Tyler, Duncan, Jovic, Bam, and Jimmy. Tyler right? Tyler at the point just does not work. They've tried it, it before. They tried it in 2021. Remember, after the bubble, they didn't know. They, they wanted Tyler had all this momentum. So it's like, what do we do with Tyler? We don't put, throw him in the point guard. Didn't work. Every time Tyler plays a point, he's not a point guard. Terry's yeah. not a point guard. You want another answer? Take that $5.2 million mid-level exception. Go get Patrick Beverly. Go get a point guard. It doesn't go, go against, get a, it doesn't go against the apron, right? With the mid-level. No, exception, right? uh, no, no. It, it's your yeah, mid-level well, exception. I'd rather have like Ty Jones or Lonnie. Wa he's not somebody else. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Any of them. Give me a point Dennis guard. Give me a point Dennis guard. Smith Jr.? That, with Dennis Smith, I think you can get him for the minimum. I'm talking the. A, I mean, even Dennis Smith's not a real point guard, though. I think Tyus Jones is kind of like that real. Yeah, I think guard. I. I I'm surprised he's still a free agent. Like I'm surprised, but I don't know what type of money he's gonna get. Um, but dude, no, I mean, just for me, get a point guard. But what I'm trying to say is, if you start whoever you start, if you take Terry Rozier, Duncan Robinson, and Tyler Hero, you take any of those three guys and start them in the backcourt, it's not the answer because those two, whoever's starting in the backcourt, are gonna get their ass blown out defensively Targeted when they're defending. Yeah, you saw it. So in my opinion, you take Haywood Highsmith, start them with Terry Rozier, that's your backcourt. You have a defensive specialist who could shoot threes, and you have your scorer in Rozier. You have Hero, Duncan, and Jaime Hawkins coming off the bench. Three guys that any of them, any given night, can give you 20 to 30. And then you have Kalel Ware and Kevin Love coming off the bench as your big man. I think it works. Hey, let me say something real quick. This is kind of off topic, but I just got this report, and this is wild, and this is why we don't trade for Brandon Ingram. <laughs> He wants two hundred million dollars. Yeah, I'm good off that. And hey, he's fraudulent. He's fraudulent. Yeah, no, two hundred million dollars contract extension and um. Hell no. Yeah, we're talking about, and that's another thing, right? And I, I know it's off topic, but trading for these players that we want, like Larry Marketing, he wants a contract extension, right? Brandon Ingram, he wants. I do a contract that. Extension. I do that. I'll do, I'll do yeah. Lawrence. I'm not. I'd extend Lori out of all of them. That's it. Oh I'm yeah, for sure. I, I'd extend, bro. I would extend Lori the moment I trade for him. What is he like? Twenty six years old, bro. All star. No, I agree. All day. What? All what day. Did you, what did you guys think about? And obviously, money plays a factor in Miami. Actually, with this report, I don't know how it went, but it said Demar chose um, staying in the West Coast because that's where he's from and stuff over Miami. But it didn't say directly money purposes. Maybe that played a factor too. But he chose the Kings because he wanted to stay out there and not in the East Coast. Well, the that's just telling. Yeah, go well, ahead. With the, Miami, go with, the, with the Miami thing, we can't. We're the, I, I've said this in the last episode. As a first apron team, we can't do a sign and trade unless we get rid of a couple players. It has to be either Tyler, Duncan, Terry, Jimmy, whoever that makes yep. over whatever. We're like eight million. Yep. Above, we're eight million in the first apron. So yeah. we couldn't do the sign and trade anyway. And who? I don't get this whole sentiment. I'm from. I get it if it's like Paul George, Kawhi, even Demar wanting to play for the LA teams or Donovan wanting to play for the New York teams going home home but like who gives a shit on the west coast for six months of the year you're traveling five times a week like you don't live there like eight like the rest of the year you live in la you live in miami like lebron and wade and all these other celebrities do right like you move like you're not home, you're home a few days a week but you're always on the road you play half the season on the road half the season at home you're always traveling it's not like you're going out in ohio like you're in your hotel, just playing cards, playing dominoes, like with the yep. boys, playing some video games, chilling, going get some food. Like, I don't understand that whole sentiment of like living somewhere during the season because it doesn't matter too much, I guess. But some people care. Some people care. I mean, it is it is a piece, right? You would rather be home in your actual home that you want to live in, right? Yeah, in your bed. I guess so. I mean, I mean, look, I mean, honestly, we just need to stop like and me, I, I say this for myself. We need to start having this mentality that, oh, pe people are going to want to come to play in Miami. Oh, it's Miami. It's Pat oh. Riley. It's it's big booty bitches. Excuse me. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like we need to stop this sentiment of, oh, people are just going to want to come here because no, we need to we need to like stop and think maybe what Big O has been saying is right. Maybe. Last time Pat Riley really got a player was Shaq. 
Maybe the that's person facts, that was really getting facts. all these players and was Dwayne Wade. Wade. He yeah. got Victor Oladipo, Jimmy Butler, LeBron facts. James, Chris facts. Bosh. Facts. Throwing the list goes Facts. on. Terry Rozier. All of that. All of that. So Nobody maybe. Cares about Pat rings. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe we need to go back to let's actually be that first class organization. Let's actually allow. Because what's our reputation right now? It's not Pat Riley. It's Spo. It's Spo taking chicken bleep and turning it into chicken salad. So hey, he's look. our prime successor. Look, in, in free agency, the players USA that team. we talked to. In the last couple of years, it's Kyle Lowry, Avery Bradley, um, Alec Burks. And I'm not with the Tucker. Avery Bradley. That was so random. And Dawson. <laughs> no, but but those are our free agency players that we brought in brought in, in the last couple of years. Jesus Christ. Talk, talk about the buyout players besides Kevin Love, too. <laughs> Bringing in Dwayne Dedman and Zeller and all these other Well, guys. look, I mean, that that's Ariza. the reason why we're – that's the, Hey, look, and, and remember, you guys, that's, uh, that's why I like Andy Ellsberg. This dude is smart. Uh, you're, I don't think the Heat are going to use the mid-level exception. I think the Heat are going to stay at 14 players because we're under the second apron. So remember, a player gets bought out and they go in the free agency market. A lot of these teams that are loaded can only offer the minimum, where Miami can offer the biannual exception. Excuse me, the mid-level exception. Yeah, but so, Ernest, yo, what player is going to be a, like? And you're right. No, that's a very good point. I just don't see what player that's going to get. Gordon that. Hayward, Westbrook, Westbrook, bro. Westbrook, what, what Westbrook might not get traded, and he or gets no. bought out. I I know, yeah. I know some tea about that. I already know some tea about that. Oh snap! Yeah, <laughs> no shit. What are you All trying right. to say? What do you know about this? No, I'm telling you, what Denver's trying to do. This is this is real shit right here. He's oh, not man, going. They're going to get him. Yeah, aggregate it. I knew it. He's not going to Miami. Denver's playing the long game. They're waiting yep. for the Clippers to buy him out because they don't want to trade any assets for Russell Westbrook. Yep. And Denver's sudden end is going to be playing with um, – Russell's going to be playing with Denver this season. Okay, but Denver Denver doesn't have their mid-level exception. So here's what I'm trying to tell you. Fair Russell enough. gets bought out. Russell gets bought out, right? Yep. Denver can offer him the minimum. But Miami calls him and they say, we'll give you the mid-level. And you come here with no, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I think the Heat are going to do. A lot of these championship teams, when a player gets bought out, all they can do is offer the minimum, which is cool because you're going to get your money where you got bought out. And then that team's going to give you a little more money. But if Miami can tell a guy like Russ that gets bought out, yo, before you go there and take the minimum, I got the mid-level exception for you. No state income taxes. Some of the girls with the luscious backside in the world and the best coach in the NBA. I mean... Hey, but does you know, it interest you? You know what I'll say that because <laughs> I can speak for Russ. I love Miami; that's my team. Russ and I want Russ to Miami, but Russ to Miami right. really doesn't make sense. They don't have enough shooters for Russ to be successful, and that's really the truth. No. I mean, look: Hero, Duncan, yeah. Highsmith, Kella yeah. Ware, nah, uh, Kevin Love off the bench. Jay Rich Kevin Love off the threes. bench. Jay Rich Alec can hit Burke. threes. Bam can Bam can hit threes. Bam is getting Yo. there. Jimmy, forty-two percent. Yes. Nah, nah. We need a backup point guard. We need a backup I, point I, guard. Yo, listen, even Martell knows it. We don't have much, it's not much shooting on this team for us yeah. to, to really use his worth. When you look at a Denver team, they 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 have shooting over there just for Murray, Jokic, um Porter. 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 KCP's gone. That's a big loss there. No, that's a huge I think, loss. I, I think the Heat have enough shooters, bro. Like for, for a guy like In Russ, opinion, look, we need a point guard. We need well, we agree. got size. We need a point guard. True Russ sure. could fit. And look, and I'll, and I'll be honest with you guys. I think you're going to see a different Bam next year. That's one thing none of us are talking about. This dude is emerging, and he's playing with USA right now. He's playing with the best players right now. I think – I don't know, man. Like, I think if I'm Spo, I'm building the offense around Bam next season. Like, I, I'm going to try yeah. it out. And, and but, Ernest, to, help, to add on to that – pick and roll with Terry Rozier. Like Terry played 31 games with us last year. It took a little while. It's hard to get traded mid season to a new team, assimilate yep. into their offense and their schemes. He started off shitty. He got way better. It was averaging like 23, 24 points per game in that last week before he got hurt. He only averaged 16, 17 total, but he wasn't going to average 20, 23 on this heat team. He was on a shitty Charlotte team shot chucking. So if he can get up to 19, 20 points per game, Develop a nice pick and roll game with Bam at a bio earnest. Having yeah. Terry in a full, to your point, we haven't had Terry in an uh, off season training camp in a full season. If he's healthy, that's huge. Like that's that's also impactful. Is getting he's our third best player. Like right? Yeah. Is he not our third best player after Bam? Uh, and Jimmy? I think a lot of guys on this team, like the, the I think the the one positive thing about this team could be next season is you have a lot of guys that can give you twenty to thirty on any given night. 
Who's I think that's 30? one thing about us. Who's the, the 30, though? Players? Jimmy or Bam? Terry. Terry, Bam, Jimmy, Tyler. Tyler, out of 82 games, he might give you two 30-point games. You know? Look, <laughs> the, 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 the last thing I'll say is, last thing I'll say is, if you get a jump from Jaime, who can just shoot the ball, right, and you get a jump from Jovic, then we're talking. That's I agree. I it can happen. Facts. That and what do you guys happen. think about Kel Ware, man? I think Kel Ware is well, going to make a statement next year. Well, the thing is, the reason why I didn't say Ware is because, bro, Ernest, they brought Thomas Bryant back for a reason. They're not going to be playing Ware too much. for the. You know, I, I have a feeling <laughs> I think it's dumb. For, I think it's dumb. But they brought Bryant back for a reason because they're like, all right, well, let's see what Ware can bring. I, I think they brought him back, bro, because Kevin Love – I, I like I think with Love they they messed up bad last year. Love was doing great in the beginning of the season. They burned him out. I think much, Love, yeah. yeah, Love is an insurance for the second part of the season. Thomas Bryant is just in case of an injury because they let go of Orlando Robinson. So it's like we have Bam, we have Ware. He it's his first year. Love is the Udonis Haslam, but he could play. But we're gonna need him later later on in the year. And then Bryant isn't insurance policy just in case love can't play so i, I agree with trent where might it might be a little bit slow for where in the beginning but look jaime hawkins took off in the beginning of the year so that's a possibility yeah. i think spo should give where a shot where is something that bam has never had a three and d center we've had kelly olenic we've had myers leonard but we've never had a three and d center and that's kel l where put him next to bam give it a shot see if it works but how long will it take before Spo actually gets him into the rotation? Because I feel like it right with Jovic, with Hawkins was kind of thrown in there because he was a yep. four year injuries, 23 year old college player, plus the injuries to Caleb, to Haywood, to yep. Jimmy a little bit here and there. So, yep. are they going to throw him in the fire? I want him to. I want him to be the backup big going in. I feel like they're going to start him off in the G League so he can get some reps there, obviously, get some minutes there. Just like they, 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 they drafted him high. I, I, I mean, like Jovic was a late draft pick and they yeah. came back from a first seed. It's different with where, you know, they got him in the middle of the draft. I hope so. Uh, yeah. And, bro, and like you see him play and you're I like, he can help. I was at the game. Yeah. I saw that person. That's Even what in I'm a bad saying. Game, he had five blocks. He had 12, six, he and needs, five. In he first he game. needs, he needs to stay in Miami for a month and eat the food down here. Like for real. He needs to gain some size. But, He'll be fine. He's down here in Miami. He can have coladas all day long. He'll be good. I love coladas. That sounds, <laughs> that's what I need right now. I'm going to the Giants game, the baseball game, first game <clears throat> that I've gone to today. So I need a colada myself. But anyway, Facts. thank you so much for hopping on, boys. It was fun just having the crew on an episode without a guest. So that was fun. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and share, and subscribe to all of our channels. We have some guests lined up uh, this week as well as next week. So we plan on having more roundtables. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. So thank you again, guys. Anything else, Martel? Like, share, comment, subscribe. And that is enough said. Yeah, buddy. Let's go.